first operon that I will be discussing today is the trip operon, which is responsible for the synthesis of tryptophan. Now, uh, in its natural state, the operon is turned on, which means that the RNA polymerase can easily bind to the promoter and uh, lead to the transcription of these genes here. Now, the transcription of these genes code for an mRNA molecule that um, then codes these polypeptide uh, subunits that are made up of the enzymes necessary for the production of tryptophan. Now, here the, regu the regulatory gene makes an mRNA uh, molecule that codes for this trip repressor. Now, this trip repressor in its natural state is inactive, which means that it cannot bind to the operator and prevent the RNA polymerase from continuing the transcription. Now, to turn off the operator, uh, there needs to be an excess amount of tryptophan. And once there's an excess amount, the tryptophan acting as a co-repressor can bind to the trip uh, repressor and change its shape and thus uh, activate it. Um, and once the, the repressor has been activated, it can bind to the operator and um, prevent RNA polymerase from binding to the promoter and continuing the, the production of tryptophan. Now, once it is detected that there are uh, low levels of tryptophan, the tryptophan will dissociate from the repressor and the repressor will, will um, return to its original shape and the operator will be turned off again. So another example of negative gene regulation is the lack operon, which is an inducible operon, which means that the, the operon is always turned off, which prevents RNA polymerase from uh, transcribing these genes. Um, now, the operon is always turned off because the repressor is always in its active state. Um, and so the LAC regulatory gene codes for this activated repressor that um, attaches to the operate, operator and um, uh, turns it off. Now, whenever there is a high concentration of lactose, the inducer allolactose can bind to the active repressor, um, changing its shape and uh, inactivating it. So now that the, inact that the repressor is inactive, it can no longer bind to the operator, and RNA polymerase can now bind to the um, promoter uh, and allow for the transcription of these genes. Now the transcription of these genes make uh, mRNA that code for these three enzymes. Uh, now B-galactosidase is um, hydrolyzes lactose into uh, galactase and um, glucose, and permease is a um, membrane protein that uh, allows lactose to enter the cell, and the function of transacetylase is unknown. Now, these three enzymes metabolize lactose, and once the levels of lactose are low enough, then the allolactose um, inducer will dissociate from the inactive repressor and return it to its um, active state. And this active repressor will return to its binding site in the operator and prevent RNA polymerase from continuing the transcription. Now when there's an, um, a high, a high uh, low concentration of uh, glucose, then there is a high, high concentration of CAMP. And CAMP binds to the regulatory protein CAP, and, uh, which activates it and changes its shape. So now the activated CAP binds to the promoter and enables the RNA polymerase um, to continue the transcription of these genes. When there are high levels of glucose, then um, there is less accumulation of CAMP, which means that it dissociates from the CAP regulatory protein, returning it to its natural um, inactive state. And by doing this, then the RNA polymerase can no longer bind to the promoter and uh, allow for the transcription of these genes. Now, in eukaryotes, the mRNA has to be processed before it can exit into the cytoplasm. Now, first, an F prime cap is added to the F prime end of the um, RNA, and a poly A cap is added to the three prime end. Now, um, the pre mRNA has to go through uh, RNA splicing, where um, the introns are cut out and the exons are spliced together. Now, um, alternative sp uh, splicing adds variation to the different kinds of polypeptides. Uh, produced depending on whether, uh, which segments uh, are considered introns and um, exons. This figure here shows the process of gene regulation in a eukaryotic cell. Now each stage um, depicted here 
represents a potential control uh, point in, in which gene expression can either be turned on or off, accelerated or slowed down. So DNA is packaged uh, with proteins in what's known as chromatin. And the structural organization of chromatin is very important in um, regulating gene expression in several ways. Now, one important way is that the location of the uh, promoter on the gene can help determine whether a gene is transcribed or not. Now, there are several chemical modifications to the histone protein and the DNA in the chromatin that influence the structure of the chromatin and the uh, gene expression. Now, histone um, acetylation is when there is an addition of, of the acetyl group to the histone protein, making it less tightly um, packed and easier to transcribe. Now, um, DNA methylation, on the other hand, is the addition of an acetyl group to the DNA on, in the chromatin, uh, making it more tightly uh, compacted and um, harder to transcribe. So once transcription takes place, the, um, the RNA goes through RNA splicing. And once this has taken place, the mRNA leaves the nucleus and goes into the cytoplasm where it, can, that, where it is translated to make proteins. Now then, these proteins can either be transported to a cellular destination or can degrade.